live in Africa for the last six or seven months, all day, every day. Nothing but Africa, 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 Africa. Down to the way they do things, down to the way they talk, down to their language, down to um, where you go eat, where you go stay. It is nothing like experiencing it firsthand. It's a total different culture shock. You could be prepared for anything. You could be, you could do extensive research on how to go get your body done. Until you lay down in that bed and have that surgery and feel the after effect, you will never feel like what it feels like. Like people can say, oh, labor hurts. You can hear stories and stories about somebody having a baby. But until you have one, you will not know what it feels like. You'll be like, damn, all right, so it's going to be that bad. I can take it. All right, so when this happens, I'm going to get an epidural. So when this happens, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, I'm going to do. But when it comes to the point where you doing it, it's different. And then the whole thing, well, for, on, on my end is she's done a lot of research. We looked at a lot of videos. We've seen a lot of the problems. My one thing is I'm always skeptical when people talk negative about how she's always going. Oh, shit. Y'all yeah, know we got a new puppy. We got a German Shepherd. Mm. I always want one. We're bred, so we got one. That should be running around terrorizing the whole no, But anyway, so the thing is, is I'm always skeptical of when people talk negative or talk down about Africa. And when people say, oh yeah, Africa is just a terrible place and it's dirty and there's no medicine, there's no water, there's no electricity. Close my door, Cameron. I take it. Go get the dog, close my door. I'm sorry. I take it, I take it in there, I take heed, but also I'm very skeptical about it. So I may say, okay, maybe it is that way to a certain extent, but it's not as bad as they make it. I know a lot of people want to prevent black people from coming back to Africa um, for whatever reason it may be. Um, so when people say or we'll talk negative about Africa, I always look at it and take it with a grain of salt. Always figure that I want to go see about it myself and make my own clear judgment. So um, it's not that we don't, we haven't done the research. It's that it's not that we don't understand. It's not that we are Hasidity or bougie or nothing like that. It's that um, a lot of the stuff that people say is, is, is more true than I took word for. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I don't, I don't like to talk bad about Africa. I wanted to come over here and I wanted Africa to be the, the land of, of milk and honey, which I, I still think it is. I just think that just as with everywhere, people will make um, experience or uh, area or whatever bad. Just like with America, America's not bad. America has technology, America has innovation, America has a lot of policies and procedures that's put in to place to make America one of the most powerful countries in the world, if not the powerful country in the world. But the people there, when I'm saying people, I mean like your, your neighborhood gangsters, your, your backwoods racists, your crooked politicians, your corrupt cops, you know what I'm saying? Um, all, all types of stuff like that. Those are the people that make America as a country bad. Um, as far as Ghana, yes, it is definitely behind, especially when it comes to the phones. It's behind about 20 years. A lot of the other stuff is behind about 10 years. So, um, but that is something that we can deal with. We just have to get used to it. Coming from America, where we have everything um, given to us on a silver platter, it's going to take some time to get used to what we have, uh, what the difference is here. Not saying that we're not going to do it. Not saying that um, it's, it's not going to be uh, challenging, but we've been through worse. We, we've grown up in, in the jets, you know what I'm saying? We've been through stuff. We've been broke. We've been, I don't say rich, but we've had money. We've been poor. We've ate banquet meals with our kids for weeks on hand. We not we not have to dig, but like I said, we've worked to get up to a certain status to where we are. Where we got a six bedroom house in the suburbs. We got multiple cars. We got bills and stuff paid for. We have businesses to where we don't have to get up at six o'clock in the morning and fight that daily grind and get back and forth to work. We've worked and we've earned these certain things, and and instantly within the blink of an eye, it's all getting taken back away from us. It's like we're starting from. from uh, Square one. So don't think that um, it's more, it's a complaint. It's more of an observation. It comes from my wife and from me. But um, so I know a lot of people who they get on here and they make these hateful comments about how we're stupid because we didn't do our research and how we 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 need to go back to America and stuff like that. The whole thing is most of y'all that's coming and never left the country. Y'all ain't never been over here. So all y'all doing is, is is doing this this black power. Oh yeah, anybody that talk bad about Africa is wrong. We felt the same way. 
before we came over here. And we're not saying all negative stuff because it's a lot of good stuff about Africa. But like we said, we want to tell you what we see, what our opinion is. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. If you want to state your opinion, then go start your YouTube channel. Come over here, spend fifty thousand dollars to come to Africa, and then you can do your YouTube channel. But for right now, you're on our YouTube channel, and we're going to tell you what we see. We're going to tell you how it is to travel, not by yourself. But we have four kids with us. We have two babies and two teenagers. And it's two of us. So that's and six people. Two animals. And two animals. So it's, it's eight people that we have to, uh, to provide for and travel with and stuff like that. And there's a lot of uh, places that don't accommodate what we have. So that makes it a little bit harder. It's also going to be a little bit more expensive for us because we are not willing to dumb down what we're used to living. We have a six bedroom house. We have five kids. All of our kids have had their own bedroom since they were born. So when we look at these houses and they say, oh, for this six bedroom in Africa, it's going to be $1.1 million and we paid 200K for ours, then that's, that's not feasible. But for somebody else that may come and they only have themselves or they have their kid, they can get a studio or they can get a one bedroom apartment. That's fine. It's easier for you. But we're giving you a, 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 a how it comes from us having four kids, two pets, and us two as eight people. Just like when we said that when we do Uber and Bolt and stuff like that, they all all of them come in this little car. None of them have minivans, none of them have SUVs. They all got these compact cars. Now for you, you may come over here by yourself, or you may come over here with one child, you can get in the back of that little teeny ass bolt. Y'all can get y'all can bolt the fuck off. But we have four kids. So that means that we have to order two. So yes, transportation is a problem for us. Yes, we do need to find a car. Yes, we need a big car. We don't need a small car. We're not going to pile four kids and two animals in a fucking Corolla. We're not going to do that. We've never done it before. We're not going to do it now. So that is a problem for us. If that's not a problem for you when you came to Africa, then that's your fucking business. But right now, we're talking about our issues and what we have a problem with Africa. Another thing is, the people here, there are not all bad people here. There are a lot of good people that we haven't met. We've met people that hook, up, hook us up on cars, houses, whatever, whatever, whatever. People have given us great leave. There has been people that have given us bad leave. We have had people that specifically say, before you make any moves in Ghana, you need to take me with you because they're going to cheat you. And this is from a, a fellow Ghanaian. So if you're coming on this YouTube channel and telling my wife that she's lying about the people and that she's lying about the prices, you can exit. You can get out. You can blexit your ass off our channel. Because we're giving you the experiences that we see. We're not getting paid to bad mouth Africa. We're not. We came here because we wanted to save Africa. We wanted to be a part of Africa. We wanted to help Africa to grow in any way that we possibly can. So we're not getting whoever this guy is that keeps commenting on all the photos or videos. Are you first off get a fucking life. That's the first thing to do. And you talking about something with the FBI? Please pay me for my opinion. I would love that shit. I'd drop a video every twenty minutes if a motherfucker was paying me just to tell you what I think. I would love that shit. So, miss me with that, oh, you must be an FBI agent or a spy or whatever this dumbass fantasy life that you live in and to think that people get on YouTube and talk bad about a country and you pay them. Like, yeah, please pay me for telling me, telling you about Africa. I would love that. So, that's just another thing. But, um, I'm, I, I know I probably took, took her no, it's okay. time, but I just wanted to address a couple of things. Um, and then somebody said something about um, losing weight or some other shit. Um, in reference to my wife, like, first of all, this is not a fitness page. Second of all, this is not a dating page. Because that's my wife. So, um, if you're not talking about Africa, if you're not talking about uh, coming back to Africa, if you're not talking about your experiences in Africa, if you're not talking about leaving Africa and going back to America, then don't comment. Because we're not here to talk about what we look like. We're not here to talk about how much we weigh. We're not here to talk about none of that. So if you want to do that, go find an Instagram model page to go subscribe to and pay her OnlyFans and go look at her and tell her, oh, you need your butt to be bigger or smaller or your waist needs to be smaller or you need to lose or gain weight or you need to eat more fruits or whatever the fuck you want to do. But this is not that channel. This is a channel about Africa. What you're seeing right now is what we do on the vlog. I got my fucking glasses on. I don't let nobody see with my glasses on. I got my damn dread cap on because I don't like to sleep because my dread is, uh, is get caught up under my arm and shit when I sleep. She got on regular clothes, her hair's not done. This is we giving you what we have. We raw. giving y'all raw footage of what's going on. We not we ain't put no fucking makeup on. We ain't trying to impress you motherfuckers. We don't wanna have relationships with y'all as far as that. 
All we want to do is put out the message of what we see, and that's it. We're not looking for no love connection. That's, that, that's just that. So everybody that's on here talking about how she need to lose weight or whatever, but first of all, get a fucking life. Just like I told Buddy, get a life. If you don't like what she weighed, then go find you a girl that, that weighed what you wanted to weigh. But that's my girl. She's fine by me. So worry about that shit or go put you a channel out of putting people on the page and saying, oh yeah, I'm a fitness or whatever. Do your page. This page right here, we talking about Africa. We talking about the problems, we talking about the good stuff, we talking about going back to America, we talking about migrating from America to Africa. That's what this page is about. It's not a beauty tips page. So, um, I think is there anything else? So a lot of people, a lot of people who have um, YouTube pages, because I've been even researching all the YouTubers too. So when y'all come on here, y'all say, "Oh, talk to Blackskin, talk to Arkansi, you need to talk to Quasi, you need to talk to I don't talk to all of them. You need to talk to uh um what was her name um the family that's on on in Ghana." Bad. Yeah, bad family, all these families. The, the I don't I don't talk to all these people. Like I guarantee you I know all the YouTubers in Africa. However, all the African YouTubers showing you how to come to Africa, how to build Africa, how to find a house, how to buy a car, how to um ship your stuff in the container, where to live when you get to Africa. Um, they're telling you everything that's good and peaceful and, and how the beach look and how you can get nice little houses, you can get nice apartments, you can eat in a nice um, restaurant. Our YouTube page is telling you how we made it to Africa, how we migrated. It's showing you our journey and it's showing you the real, the raw, and the unfiltered. So when they saying that we live in our best life in Africa, we showing you how when you come over here, you don't see all that. You have to make that shit happen. So we taking you through our journey of making that shit happen. We might not even get to the point where we live in our best life if we can't deal with this shit. Because everything ain't for everybody. Man, I've, I said this has been a dream since I was five years old. I've been wanting to live in Africa. I'm here now. I can live here or I can take my ass back home and still got my house and, and move on like it ain't never changed. I can do that. I can never roll with it. Um oh, I can go I can go right back to go right back home and never come back here again. Or go back home and stay home for a while and um then come back here later because I make good money in America, but I can't make that same money here because everything is uh my my um internet uh a what is it called? My I, IP address is all the places that I need to go on to to make my money and to do my work, the IP address is restricted in America in Africa. So I can take my ass back home and make some money and come back later, you know, deal with that whatever. Um, however, I just want you guys to follow me through this journey. And as far as um, what I've seen good about Africa so far, the people are nice. You have, you have some nice people here. You have some beautiful, gorgeous homes. The beach is so peaceful, but it could be better. Um, we talk about the good things. Um, it's up and coming. It's a lot of building being done. Um, it's good to see that what they was talking about, all the people living in shacks and all that shit, it's partly true, but it's not all true. So that's why I said I wanted to give you the um, the raw and unfiltered because um, I noticed that a lot of people say that on their page that. So they told y'all that Africa, because when I was little, they told us that Africa was real dirty and um, people, the kids had sky coming out their nose and um, they had flies on them and big stomachs and stuff like that. You do see that here. That is true. You do see that. But it's not all true. Because 
Yeah, in order for you to really see that, you gotta go to the village and see that. But it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of hungry kids here. A lot. So when your parents used to tell you back in the day that it's starving kids in Africa, so eat your food. That shit is true. Every child that we seen came up to us doing this. They so hungry. They be on the streets all hours of the night, all day long. I can show you better than I can tell you. I can get you some footage of it today. Matter of fact, I think so I do is, have footage of it. This is what it keep doing. Oh, prepare. I can get you some footage of it today where I go out on the street. When, when me and Kevin go out, um, the kids run up to the car. And they not no older than this one. I think the youngest one I seen was two. Maybe two. It ranged from two to about 18. And they all hungry. And they begging, come on, mommy, please, please. I'm hungry. I haven't ate in three days. So it is starving kids in Africa. So that's true. But it is kids that live good, too. Um, it is kids with flies and big stomachs and in the village messed up. But it is kids that live in good houses, too. So they showed you half of it. But nobody really shows you the real raw and untrue, the real raw and the truth of it. I really want to go take y'all to the village and show y'all how life really is, and show y'all on the streets how it really is before you just see the good us living our best life. We want to see everything to get there. You don't just come to Africa and just automatically live your best life unless you only give a fuck about yourself. But tell them, Kevin, every day, do I ask you for money? Mm -hmm. To do what? To just give it away. That's just, all we just, do. Just give it away. I just want to give money to the kids. I mean, give money to people. I, I buy stuff on the street that I know I don't want. I was, I was about to say, I was about to say, we got sugar cane laying around here somewhere that we just bought because she just wanted to get a lady some money. And she said, okay, well, let's just buy it. She had um, all types of shit. Plantains. Like, Plantains. Don't eat plantain. She didn't like it, didn't want it, but she just wanted to give away some money. They gave kids so a lot of money, they started dropping on the car when we ride past them. Mm -hmm. They called they call me captain when I pull up. And they know you. See, that's the good thing about it. People get to know you. So everybody out on the street, we ride out the street every day, talking to people, meeting people, greeting people, going to see people. So everybody know us on the streets. People know us everywhere now. And we ain't been here that long, but people know us everywhere because we go out and we talk to people, we chill with them, we see them, and we, we, sing, we with them. sing with them, play with them, roll down our windows, dancing and stuff, and singing songs and shit. And so they know us from doing that. So when we see them, they like, oh, I see you yesterday. So it, it becomes a point where every time he goes through the toll booth, they pay for him to get through the toll booth for free. You know? So we're not here for us. We didn't come to, like, we could have stayed in America, no problem, dealt with the, the racial injustice. We could have dealt with the violence, the um, inequality in America. I mean, I, I was raised on being uh, voted out and being an outcast and um, racism. I know that shit firsthand how that shit feels. And I can deal with it because I was raised like that. So it was it happened all my life. So it doesn't matter to me. So I could have sat there and deal with it because I lived good and I had my own place and my own building and uh, offices and work and making money and shit kids them good so I could have did that but my whole concern was Kevin do you know it's people over in Africa who need us who need our skills who need our talents who need our health who need our brains our knowledge our power who we can go over and take these same businesses that we're doing in America to make America great we can go over there and make Africa great so we didn't come to Africa for us you came to Africa for them. So all I'm saying is that when we come to Africa for you to build up your country and help you out, why are you making it so hard for us? Why is it so hard to get a nice place with a, a good price tag? Why is it so hard for us to go out on the street and buy something without getting cheated? 
Why is it so hard for us to, to uh, speak your language and I can speak your language to you and you don't understand me or you don't I, you act like you don't know understand me because I'm not a Ghanaian, but you understand the uh, another guy who's a Ghanaian who says the same thing to me, same thing to you in my in the same language. You understand him or you respond to him, but you don't respond to me speaking your same language like, as if you didn't understand it. So um, everywhere we go. It's like it's something, it's a problem. So they make it hard for us. And we, we here, we dealing with it, but we don't have to. We have choices. We go to another country, we take our lives back to America. But we do definitely have choices. And we and we definitely don't want to suffer less of anything. Okay, and, and for me, um, we did come over here with a bunch of plans to help out and do our part. Me? I came over here because I wanted to get away. I wanted to get back to my roots. I feel like America is it's not for black people. It's built by black people, but it's not built for black people. I feel like the, the laws and the rules of the country do not apply fully to all black people. Um, and I felt like I wanted to be somewhere where I can be around my people, where I can feel safe. I to do that. Where I can feel safe. Um, but, like, like my wife said, I wanted to help. I wanted to do my part as well. So um, that's why I, I, I agreed. That's why we both decided that we should do that. I, I came here. I didn't want to help the people, but I came here because I needed a break. I wanted to come and I wanted to try to see if we can help or do our part in making Africa um, competition for other countries because I feel like Africa has purposely been held down because they know the strength and the power that Africa has. And I think that they don't want Africa to be a superpower because of the melanated skin that occupies 90% of Africa. So I think that people have decided that they wanted to purposely hold Africa down. They wanted to stop the technology. They wanted to stop the uh, innovation. They wanted to stop the progress of Africa and keep them under everybody because they don't want Africa to get to the point where they are a, a new superpower full of black melanated people. So, um, that's why I wanted to come over. The thing that got me, and I was telling my, my guy, the, the guy that we got to take us around, is that um, it's crazy because at, every time we talk to somebody, the first thing they say is, oh, make sure you got me with you because if not, they're going to try to cheat. Now, I'm from D.C. I've been places where I know that I'm probably going get, to get cheated or I'm probably going to get approached or probably get, you know, or some kind of crazy shit like that. But this is not the whole DC. I've sent plenty of my military friends to DC and I have said, okay, yeah, you good over here, you good over here, you good over here, but don't step your ass across Southern Avenue. Don't step your ass down there on, on 22nd and Savannah because they won't they gonna milk your ass. You know what I'm saying? I have not been in a place yet here where somebody said, Oh, it's safe for you to go. Without getting uh, you know, uh, juiced or coned or something like that by the locals. Like that's that's not that's not a good look. It's not a good look. You know what I'm saying? And I was telling, I was talking, me and my sister was talking, I was telling them, I said, look, we, we're not the enemy. When the colonizers come over here and, and the Asians and all that, when they come over here, they get, they build factories. You know what I'm saying? They, they get big houses. They get this warm welcome because these Africans over here seem like they worship white skin, pale skin. And then when they see their own people like us, that are coming to that are coming to be a part of society and not be above society. Because when you when everybody else come over here, they coming over here to be above them. They coming over here to build factories and make money and put them to work in crumbs. You see what I'm saying? They coming over here with the complex that I'm better than them, so I'm gonna give them money to make them do what I want. When I see videos and I see this old white European guy and he got two little African girls, one of them seven, eight, and, and whatever, and he's paying them or paying their mothers to take their kids and do whatever it is that you want to do with them. That's a complex that they have when they come over here having tell them to stop. I think they only they think that because they got money, they white, they got money. They are not rich. Yeah. Rich. And that's and that's and you know that's a common thing for a lot of other people. That's a common thing for uh, you know a, a lot of people in the States. It's a common thing for uh, our kids have said that numerous times. That oh they white so they must got money. And that's not true. That's, that couldn't be so much farther than the truth. It don't make sense, but that's the complex. Now, my child is, is, is five. 
You have grown as adults over here that feel that same way. You have grown as adults over here that look at white skin and think, oh my God, this is this is what God looks like. You have cars and vans and these little micro buses that they have over here that have white Jesus on the back of their trucks. They have, they even got a Spanish Jesus on the back of their shit. I'm like, what the fuck, ain't none of y'all cars black? None of them? Like you live in a 90% in a black continent country continent and all your gods are different colors yeah, but none of them are black like that shit is crazy the self-hatred is what makes them do what they do to us that they don't do to the colonizers that they don't do to the Asians mm -hmm. they don't do to the Middle Easterners and stuff like that so that's what the complaint is about you can go anywhere and get rafted that's just what happens you know what I'm saying it's a dog eat dog world and Africa is no different when it comes to mentality than anybody else and that's not what we're trying to say we're not trying to make it seem like Africans are the only grimy people in the world. Nigga, have you ever been to New York? Yeah, go to New York and be fresh off your boat and they gonna milk your ass. I'm telling you. So it's not just about Africans. It's just the point that we come to our, our back to our homelands where we're supposed to feel safe and we're supposed to feel comfortable because we're around people that look like us and this is where we get shafted the most. This is where they, they haven't told us a safe place that we can go right now that we won't get shafted, except an African-American community, in our own community. That doesn't make sense. When you segregate go, yourself. You segregate yourself. When you go to when you go to other countries, just like here, they got a Chinatown here that don't know Africans living. How the fuck you gonna come to Africa and build a community that Africans can't come in in Africa? You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure the, the, the white people, the Europeans got uh, communities out here that Africans can't afford to live they in. They live in South Africa. Like you know what I'm saying? They, they do it in South Africa all the time. South mm -hmm. Africa is so segregated. So everywhere they go, even in the United States, in D.C., they got a Chinatown. Down in Atlanta, they got a Chinatown. You go uptown in, in, in D.C., they got where all the Spanish people go, Columbia, Columbia Avenue, Columbia, Columbia, Road. Road, Columbia Road up there, 14th and Gerard and all that shit. Where all the Spanish people, they got Spanish schools, Spanish teachers, Spanish uh, stores, all types of shit. You go further up, you got where all the white people, Wisconsin Avenue and stuff like that. You go to certain places uh, in like uh, Maryland, uh, not Bellsville, but Hyattsville stuff, that's where all the Africans congregate at. You see what I'm saying? Everybody got their own spot. So you come here and you say, okay, well this is where we all should be the same. We should all be on the same wavelength. And it's not. We still, as African Americans, and, and granted, the, the, the the emphasis should be on African because that's our first our first trade name. It's African American, not American African. We're African Americans. So we're Africans first, then we're Americans according to the rules of the United States of America. They don't come and say, oh yeah, it's an American male. They say he's an African American male. We make sure that we understand that shit. So when we come back to Africa, they say, look, I'm an African, African American. And you look at me and say, you're white. We're gonna fuck you over because you're not white skin. We love the white skin, but you're brown skin and you're and you're from over there. So we're gonna fuck you over. That shit is that shit is that shit is bogus. Mm -hmm. That shit is bogus. So um, we're not saying that Ghana is full of bad people. We're not saying that Ghana is some shit. What we're saying is that Ghana is decades behind in technology, a couple of decades behind in uh, innovation and. Decades behind on common sense. Presentation, common sense. Like Mentality. They still, they still live in that post-traumatic slave disorder type shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They still suffer from when the colonizers came and took us, our ancestors, and swept us off to the United States. They still suffer from that mentality. They still look at the white men like, oh yeah, this guy is the person that we need to bow down to. But we can go just like they did in, in, in Gambia, sell our own brothers and sisters to the white man to get money to get guns or to gain power and stuff like that. They still living in that era. 400 something years, 500 years later, they still living in that era. You see what I'm saying? So, like I said, we can go to the mall, you see a Lebanese, you see a, a China pers a person from Asia, you can see a person from Europe, they walk around the mall, they get assisted, they get help, they get this, they get that, they get third. My wife be out the window, uh, some campaign thing that she said, her and the kids Full said. Move, Fana, and they look at her, and one nigga actually said, you ain't gone it, nigga. I'm, I'm trying to be. I want to be a part of your community. I don't want to come here and I don't want to break your kids. I don't want to buy your kids from you so I can do sex, strange sexual acts to them. 
I want to chill with your kids. I want my kids to chill with your kids. I want to be among you. I want to see what your president is. Put that dog down. I want to see what your president is. And the first thing he tell you is, you're not God. What the fuck? I ain't never seen that shit. Let a white person say that. I guarantee the whole God will go, all this type shit. You know what I'm saying? So, and it, it's crazy. And then the crazy part about it is we was going to do a social experiment because my wife would, would yell that out. And motherfuckers be looking at her like she crazy. Or motherfuckers would say something slick like, oh, you ain't from Ghana or you ain't Ghanaian or whatever the fuck. And then my sister would say, oh, she said, and then he'd say the same exact thing she said in the same way that she said it, in the same actual phrase. And they'd go, oh, yeah, four, da, 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 four, da, da. Like, she just said that same exact thing. And you looked at her like she was crazy, but like you did not understand or comprehend what she was saying. Or the ones who did act like they comprehended, pass up the negative to say. You had a, you had a good five percent of the people, maybe ten percent of the people that when they when she yelled it out, they smiled and laughed and, and waved at her. But but most of the people who had, had negative attitudes towards it, or they act like they didn't comprehend until my assistant said the same exact thing. Because he's a god. Because he's a god. And that shit, like we don't got time for that. We should be trying to. Y'all should be. And I'm not saying that we should be put on a pedestal, but what I'm saying is we should be welcome because we belong here. Nobody's saying that we should be put on a pedestal. Oh, that's another thing. All you stupid motherfuckers that keep acting like that, we think that we the goddamn kings and queens of fucking Egypt and all that other shit because we want to be accepted in our own fucking country when we come back. Shut the fuck up. Because y'all blowing the shit out of me. Real life. We not trying we not trying to be put on a pedestal, but we want to be accepted. The same way y'all fucking accept everybody else that's here. Every time y'all accept these fucking Europeans that got two African babies with them, two African female babies, and all the Africans just is let this motherfucker walk through their country. And they accepted him. And they said, oh, sir, you need help with your bags and your two slaves that you bought? Accept us the same way. When we out here hugging your kids, we giving them CDs and, and, and playing with them and dancing with them. We don't want to buy them. We don't want to do nothing sexual to them. But you don't want to accept us. But you accept this motherfucking European walking through the mall with two babies and with goddamn leashes on them. Because he done bought them from somebody. So stop making it seem like we think that we better than everybody and we expect this big ass celebration. No, we expect to be accepted where we belong. Where we fought to come back to. We spent a lot of money to come back to. You. But all we ask is to be accepted. This is not the fucking United States. That's why we left the United States. Because we are not being accepted as African Americans in America. So we want to come back to where we're originally from, which is Africa, hence the African American, and we should be accepted and we are not. That is the frustration. So if you feel like, oh, y'all think that just because y'all come to the world, y'all are supposed to stop and you're supposed to get the bill? No, stupid fuck. I expect to be accepted by my own people, though. I expect not to get fucked over by my own people, though. I expect to be able to help my own people and not feel like shit afterwards. That's what I expect. So miss me with that dumb shit, because some of y'all motherfuckers on this page is real quick to talk some negative shit. Don't even know what the fuck you be talking about. Some of y'all really need to either get a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a career, some money, or a uh -huh. past time, or something. Because y'all get on here and y'all just can't wait to say something negative. Y'all can't wait to say something negative. And all we doing is stating the opinion. Not once have I shot down God as a country. I always say, I want to I wanna do this. I want to stay here. I want to make this work. I want to check out some more resources. Even now, we feel like, man, we probably be better off in the States just fighting uh, brutality. Just stay in our house. Stay in our big ass house, put a gate around our shit, order our shit from our Uber and, and Amazon groceries, and mind our fucking business. At least we know how we get from. Exactly. At least we know where it's coming from. Yes. So, and then, but at right, even right now, I still got my sister still texting me houses and cars. And I'm still looking for houses and cars because I do want to make this work. I do want to run into those group of Ghanaians that want us to be here and that want to help us and want us to fit so that we can get the den the free dentistry uh, started. So that we can get um, all the other things that we want to do to help out Ghana and do our part of starting. The, 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 the whole act what we was doing with the pregnant teens in Africa that, that sell themselves or whatever for tampons and simple money items and food and stuff like that. We want to put it into that. The lady said yesterday, the teenagers are even selling their uh, they body for um, phone cards. The airtime, yeah. you put on your phone cards. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? We're mm -hmm. trying to get rid of that. Well, I ain't gonna say we're trying to get rid of it, but we're trying to help it. I know we ain't gonna be able to do it by ourselves, but I figure if we can start an organization and we can get people to join in, especially my fucking black Americans from America, that have got money and that are rich, these entertainers, these uh, 
athletes and stuff like that, these movie stars, we can start an organization that get big enough to help. And maybe we can help a lot of these females out. Maybe you can get bigger than that. And that's my assistant texting me right now. You see what I'm saying? So don't don't fucking come on my page or our page talking about some y'all need to go back to America and shit like that or whatever. Especially if you ain't never been over here. If you ain't never been over here, you might as well just keep fucking scrolling when you see this video. Because everybody wants you to say something good about Africa. And I don't have no problem They want you to good. talk good about Africa. They don't want you to say nothing bad about Africa. But we need to talk about reality. Let's face reality, brothers and sisters. Let's tell the truth. Let's keep it raw and unfiltered. So there will be no shocks when you come over here and see this shit. So you, so you will know that this shit is not all peaches and cream. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to pretend with you. Just like with R. Kathy, when I look at her joint, R. Kathy will tell you about the fucking electricity. She'll show you how undeveloped Gambia is. But she'll tell you, come over here and let's make it better. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, let's not get on here and lie and tell people, oh, it's so beautiful. You live your best life in Africa. I always say, let's make Africa home again. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of work that needs to be done here for our people, for their mentality. Most people, I'll say 95% of the people here in Ghana believe that Jesus is coming back to save them. Ain't no fucking Jesus coming back. Jesus is not coming back to save you. Y'all been left behind. Yes, you have been through slavery for 401 years, and you think that Jesus is going to save them? He had 401 years plus to save you, and he still ain't back yet. And my daughter, my 15-year-old daughter said the other day, if I had a friend, and my friend said, I'm going to leave you right here, I'm going to come back and save you. And her friend kept calling and said, uh, I mean, she kept calling her friend and saying, hey, friend, look, they over here messing me up. I done got raped already, and they, they starving me. I, I can't get nowhere. I can't get no job. They saying they going to do this for me, and they not doing this for me. Can you please come save me? And her friend don't come. She said she going to cut her ass off because obviously she not a friend. Because if a friend loves you and cares about you, they will save you. Now, we've been praying to white Jesus since we could remember. Centuries. Not decades. Centuries. Centuries, and he ain't come back yet. How long do it take a nigga to come back and save his people? And they are so, they are over religious over here. And we are suffering. With, people need food. They hungry. They living in shacks. They taking the containers that people bring over here and bring their stuff over here. They cut the containers in four and they use it for a house. Can you imagine having a family and y'all in a box like this and y'all sleeping this every day? It's cities and cities and cities of container houses. There's little boxes, like a shed, like a storage shed. Because we always try to get the smaller storage shed to put our stuff in. Mm -hmm. They sleeping in that shit. They living like that. And this is on purpose. This is what this is what the, the globe is doing to Africa on purpose. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like this is this is not Africans being lazy because when we go outside. Get the five o'clock in the morning, they out there working, serving. I'm talking about all everywhere. night long, everywhere. We come in the house 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning, they still out there. I don't know when they get sleep. No, I don't they even don't. think they sleep. They out there hustling all the time. So it's not a laziness problem. It's not a laziness problem. This is this is engineered yes. to keep Africa exactly where they are. Just like in America, it's engineered to keep black people down. Exactly. Everything that they thought about, the, down from to the education, from the education down to uh, uh, welfare, down to housing, down to mental health, mental health, hospitalization, um, healthcare, whatever, it was all engineered to hold us to a certain level. You cannot get above this level because they know that if you get anywhere close to where they are, it's over. It's over. Their chest game, no more. So, they know that. Uh huh. So they did this to us. You see. So at the end of the day. Oh, you want the breakfast? No, we're not finished. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so at the end of the day, we know what was what's going on and we, we see right through this shit 
all the, the scams and all the shit. But my whole thing is they, they stuck on this white Jesus. They, they fucking over their own people. They stuck in this slave mentality the way anybody that look like them, they see as, as food. They'll do anything for five CDs. It's just like, it's so crazy. And we need more Americans to come over here and help this situation because we can't do it on our own. This is like a project that's way bigger than us to take on, on our own because it's so many people. So many people. I'm talking about the streets. Y'all know when in America, if you're from America, you know when it's a festival, when it's like the Jamaican festival or uh, 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 Martin Luther King Day or something like that, and all the people come out and the streets are blocked off and it's crowded, it looks like that all day long in Ghana. But they work it. They work all day long. That's how it looks. It's crowded. You can't maneuver. You can't get through the streets. You can't walk it. I'll show you on my videos, but if I can edit this video, I will put it in here. But when I can't edit, I just kind of put this right here, this raw footage straight on there. And that's the only way I can do it right now because editing and uploading takes too long. And I'm, I'm going to have to sit down and do it soon, but I'm going to show y'all. So I'm, I'm, I'm about to eat off the video, but I wanted to leave y'all with a few things. Nobody's bashing Africa. We're stating the good things and we're stating the bad things. We're stating our own opinion. Nobody is paying us for this shit. We're telling you what we see for anybody that may want to come to Africa soon or later. Whenever you want to come, you have something to reference off of, like their other videos are. Second of all, don't come on here talking about physical appearances and stuff like that because that's not what we're here for. We're here to educate people about being in Africa. We're not here to give beauty tips. We're not here to make love connections. Um, the other thing is, if you have negative comments of any sort, off our page. You don't have to come to our page. We don't pay you for views. So you don't have to come to our page. If you don't like our personalities, if you don't like the way we look, if you don't like my fucking glasses, you can scroll the fuck on to whatever you want to do. That's your business. But keep the negative shit off our page because we don't need it. We need all the positive energy from every black person and our ancestors put together that we can get right now. We are in the motherland. We have left America to come back to the motherland. We do not need negative attitudes from anybody of melanated shape. We don't need that shit. We need all positive guidance and love right now. Because we're trying to stay here. We're trying to make it work. And we're trying to be a part of our African culture. So if you got something negative to say, especially if you're black, get the fuck off our page. If you're not black, then you probably shouldn't be on our page in the first place. Unless you want to learn something. Unless you want to be humble. But other than that, if you want to come on here and you want to spread negativity, then leave. Disappear. You know what I'm I think that's all I have to say. So people, get ready. There's a change that's coming and you don't need no ticket. Just get on board.